Howdy, this is Tubal Kane again, and I'm continuing with uh, machinability uh, videos, and this is the second part. The first one was the lathe, and in this one I'm going to do a little bit of milling and then a little bit of drilling, perhaps, on uh, t two different kinds of material here. Now the purple, or the reddish here, is uh, uh, lead loy or 12L14 screw machine stock and by the way screw machine stock is available in round hex and square and then the other piece here that is marked David it's a man that gave it to me but I'm not sure what kind of steel it is but it's uh, I'm sure just cold roll steel and this is a sharp half inch end mill and I'm 100 thousandths deep and at about a thousand RPM I'm going to use a little oil by the way, if you never saw my video, uh, tips number 135 on how to make a spill-proof oil can, uh, check that out. And let's just take a cut across here and see if there's any difference at all between the two pieces of steel. Okay, here it is again, 100,000 deep. There's machinability here between uh, the uh, lead loy steel and the cold roll steel and the plated steel here is simply a piece of three quarter inch key stock not sure exactly what it is but probably isn't very good so I'm going to run a three eighths mill straight across through the soft steel and then into the harder steel see if we notice any difference I'll use a little cutting oil now if you haven't seen my tips 135 on how to make the spill proof oil can sure do that Cutting speed of about 1100 RPM, and that's again a 3 8 end mill that is eh, not all that sharp. Now in this part of the video, I'm going to do some drilling. So this is the lead loy 300, 12L14, a quarter inch bit, not particularly sharp, just one out of my index. I've center punched a hole there, I'm going to drill it, and then a little later we'll tap it. But notice the chip formation, the shape of the chips, and so on in uh, this particular sequence. And no oil, I'm not using oil on purpose. Now those are the chips from the uh, lead loy. The next up is a uh, common 1018 cold rolled steel. No oil. See how long the chips are now? I'm breaking them.
Notice that most of the long chips uh, flew off the machine. And I could tell, you won't be able to tell, but it took much more pressure for me to drill through that than it did the lead loy. And uh, that is what we call the power requirement. So on a lathe where they are producing millions of parts so over a period of time, if they were able to document it and measure it, there would be less electricity used with the uh, free machining steel than uh, with uh, regular carbon steel. So there is a, uh, a difference in power requirements. Now let's try to tap the steel. Now I will tap these two holes with a uh, 5 16 18 tap. It's a tapered tap. I have not, uh, well I just took this out of my tap index. It is not necessarily a new one, but it, you know, it's just a tap that's been used, but I do not think it's a bad one. Holding it in my Greenfield tap and die wrench, and I think I'll start with the screw machine stock. No oil. Taps free enough. Now for the cold roll steel, and I've already started it just to save a little bit of time. Again, no oil. Oh, does that feel sticky in comparison? Like it, like it wants oil. The other one didn't, didn't say oil me please, but boy does this one ever. Can you hear the clicking? Almost to the point where I'm afraid that I could break the tap. Doesn't want to back up. It catches. Oh, what a difference. What a difference. Now it, now it feels like the lead loy. And as the tapping fluid diminishes, got a little bit harder. But I can feel the amount of work that I am doing in the cold roll steel, but this one's a little deeper, too, or it's a little thicker. It's one inch instead of three quarter but I can feel a big difference in the power requirements, at least the power that Tubal Cain himself is exerting. What a difference! I know that doesn't show up on the video and you have to take my word for it. That's a little deeper than you normally would tap anyway. You'd put some kind of relief on on a one inch piece, but this is a demonstration. I didn't go quite to the end of the tap, but what a difference there was between those two steels with a 5 16 18 tap. Next, I've got two pieces of 3 8 rod. This one unknown, but I believe it to be just cold rolled out of my scrap box. This one also came out of the scrap box. A little rust on it, but look what it. Uh, shows on the end. There's the purple from Ryerson Steel from many many years ago. So that's lead loy. I think I'll start by doing the lead loy and I'm going to be using the 3816 die with the little collet so I make sure I got it on straight and I am going to use oil with this. I went ahead and got the thread started because it's always a little uh, awkwardness and getting a thread started on on a rod but I did uh, bevel or chamfer one end of each of the pieces I'll only put about half inch of thread or so on there And this is not a high-speed steel die. 
these cheaper dies never are. This is the cold roll steel now and that was much harder to get started. I'm glad I didn't even try to do it on on camera. As a matter of fact I had to put a little bit more of a of a chamfer on the rod. And I can feel that the effort that I'm putting forth in uh, turning this die is considerably more than the other one. I'm glad I'm not threading 12 inches here. enough and both of the threads look quite good you can see on the end of this that's where I put the extra chamfer that's why it looks kind of irregular here it was very hard to get started because it was harder steel for the next part of the demonstration I'm going to quickly thread these two pieces and this is the same material I just cut the threads off that I put on with the die but I I got an undercut on both of them and I center drilled them, faced and center drilled them and they are ready to uh, be threaded. Since this is 3.8 stock it's going to be 3.8.16 and I'm going to use this carbide tool. I won't show it all. And here we go. Look at the chip. They, of course, won't be showing all of this. This is the Ledloy piece, 12L14. Just a few more passes. See that nice chip? I don't think we'll get that on the other piece. Now this is the other piece, not the lead line. Ready to thread. Here we go. Catch it on the line. I'm not explaining all the steps of threading because that's in many of my other videos. This is actually threading a lot better than I thought it would.
Well, here they are. That's the Ledloy. And this is the one I just finished. Whatever it is. And I'll have to say, there isn't a whole lot of difference in the finish. They both look quite good. So you draw your own conclusions on that. And I'm going to have to tell you that this is the first time that I've ever used this threading tool. Not only was it brand new and sharp, but I've, I've never used that kind of pre-sharpened carbide. And I love it. I don't believe I'll show you the trade name on it. That was wonderful. Okay, you've seen me uh, turn this lead alloy and uh, drill it and tap it and thread it uh, with a die and on the lathe and a little milling and, and the whole business. So, uh, this is Tubal Kane saying, hope you enjoyed this uh, video on machinability and uh, see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.